Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline and today we're talking about keyboards. So of course this isn't sponsored, none of these keyboard companies pay- Ugh! 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 Okay, stop. Stop. I, I shouldn't even have to address this, but I will anyway. Uh, of course, I would never ever tell you guys something based on uh, oh man, this, these guys paid me to do it, right? It was something like that. Uh, like, I mean, look at this keyboard. That, this key's missing because I cleaned it one time and uh, I lost the key. But but look at this, the, the label is gone. The label is completely worn off. Like, all this rubber is worn, I've had this keyboard for seven years, guys. Uh, so we're talking from the heart here, from actual experience. This is not one of those, let's, uh, let's review a keyboard, go buy it. Please, affiliate links. So yes, this is my genuine opinion, but uh, on that note, speaking of sellouts, I think that mechanical keyboards actually have a little bit higher of a reputation than they kind of deserve. Kind of like how milk is supposed to be healthy for you because they just pumped out millions of dollars with ads for years and years and years when it's actually not. I feel like mechanical keyboards kind of have that same effect where they've been marketed so much, especially the gamers, that people are like, oh yeah, Buy a mechanical keyboard. Those are those are for gamers, uh, and maybe they are. Maybe you like them. But in this video, I want to especially show the alternatives, the ones that aren't as marketed as much. They don't have those budgets. Uh, they're not maybe as represented. So I have two different types of keyboards, and of course, I will be going over uh, the mechanical keys as well. I have owned mechanical keyboards in the past. I've tried to upgrade this thing. I swear to you, I've tried to upgrade this thing like four times. Every single time I return the keyboard because I don't like it as much as this. I've owned a Corsair, I've owned a Razer mechanical keyboard, I've owned all the good ones, and uh, well, I have this to demonstrate, but trust me, I do have experience with them. All right, all right, guys, so what is this? What are, you, what are you trying to pull on me here? Okay, so this is a membrane keyboard. Notice that it's very, very thin. These keys are super, super thin, they're chiclet keys and uh, that's obviously much much thinner than these normal mechanical switches and so people are normally concerned with the lifespan of membrane keyboards like i said i've had this for six seven years i probably have more key presses per year than 99.9 percent .9 of the population and it's still all in well the only flaw with the keyboard is this missing key all the way back here and that's because of me i lost i took all the keys off to clean it and then i lost this key so let's talk about pros and cons. Most of the cons for this keyboard are not directly related to functionality. They're just like comfort sort of things. And most of the pros are great functionality. So first of all, these keys are very thin. They're chiclet keys. And the actual mechanism for a membrane keyboard is very, very shallow. So you can see as I, I'll hit the enter key here, for example, it's very like, it's either on or it's off. There's no in between, on, off, on, off, on, off. And it's very, very obvious when you are actually triggering the switch because there's only two ways to press it. There's, it's either completely up or bottomed out. There's no in-between. This is very important for gamers. Gamers want accurate keystrokes more than anyone, more than typists. Like typists don't care exactly when the key actuates. They just care that they press the key. Gamers though, they really care. Like I used to play Osu a ton. And uh, for, for Osu, it really matters to get on the beat, right? You know, when I want to hit the beat, I want the key to go down immediately. There should be no in-between time. So that is the primary advantage of membrane keyboards. Yeah, they don't feel as nice. They aren't as luxurious, but as far as functionality goes, the moment you press this key, the trigger switches, no matter what. And you know exactly when it's pressed down because there's only two states, there's on or off, and it's very, very, there, there's almost no depth to it either. Literally, like if you push this down at all, it immediately triggers. It's so, so, so sensitive. And obviously that's great if you are a gamer and you want accuracy in your keys, but we have these. So here we have a sampler for all the various mechanical switches, the popular ones at least. These are MX Cherry, but most of the other companies have switches that are somewhat like these and I'll explain to you why. So there are basically two different, uh, there's two groups here. There's these, these are the clicky ones. And these, these are the not clicky ones. They have no switch. Like when you press the switch, it doesn't tell you. These, when you press the switch, there's a clear bump. You can clearly tell. So we'll start over here. This is MX Cherry Blue, and this is MX Cherry Brown. The blue is the very, very clicky one, and probably the best for gaming, to be honest, because of how 
uh, you know, you know exactly when you click the key every single time. And brown is not as clicky. It can be easy to get lost if you're going really, really fast. It can be easy to not actually be able to tell when you have the key pressed, even though there is that bump there. So right off the bat, we can see some differences. Now, remember, with a membrane keyboard, the moment you press it down, that was it. Like, there was either on or off. There was no lag time in between. But with these switches, you can see there's actually a pretty good amount of time. I'm not actually triggering the switch. I'm just pressing it down. There's all this in-between empty space that the switch, uh, the, the, there's nothing here. And it's not until you really press it down somewhere in the middle that the switch actually triggers. Why can this be an issue for gamers? So for gamers, obviously, you want as little delay as possible. People go to crazy lengths to push for higher and higher FPS just to decrease their input delay. And plus, ping is, is also a big deal. I mean, pro gamers, they sometimes, you know, think about League of Legends, they move to where the servers are to get lower ping, right? Delay is such a big deal. And when you have delay built into the keyboard, this is all the delay, by the way. This entire spot is the delay. Maybe it's only a few milliseconds, right? But there is input delay in all of these keys because you'll be pressing it down, and the time between when you press it and you actually find the switch is not immediate, like a membrane keyboard. The trade-off is that it feels a lot more luxurious. It feels much nicer, especially for just casual use. If you do anything else besides gaming, these this obviously feels nice for everything else. Now, this MX Red, so this is MX Red and MX Black. These are the non-clicky keys that we'll be talking about now. MX Red, MX Cherry Red, is the most popular switch, I think. And that's because it's been the most marketed switch. Remember, I, I do think that a lot of the mentality of these sorts of things from gamers comes from the marketing. So MX Cherry Red has been the most marketed for gamers, which I think is ironic because I think that this is the worst switch out of all of these, out of like any of the MX Cherry switches and all the Alienware switches, I think that MX Cherry Red is probably the worst switch for gamers specifically. It's probably the best switch if you're just like chilling on your keyboard and you want a really luxurious type of feel because it's very easy to press down. There's no there's no switch to involved. It's just very, very smooth, right? Feels great. But this can be a big issue if you're a gamer because there is nothing that tells you when you've pressed the switch down. It's completely smooth all the way down. Remember, there's a there's a good amount of lag time. There's a good amount of empty space here where there's nothing happening. So you actually have no clue when you're triggering the key. It's somewhere around here. I don't know. And that's, I, I this is, I had a Corsair Vengeance MX Cherry Red. I, I took it back almost immediately because I could not play, for example, Osu uh, or any other game really because when you're trying to get these very accurate key presses and you don't know when you are actually pressing the key down, it's a real, it's a real, real pain. Where is it? Is it here? Is it here? So I really uh, would discourage gamers specifically from picking up MX Cherry Red switches. You need to know when you're pressing the button down. You have to know it, it's the accuracy is key. You're not you're not a typist necessarily. It doesn't that doesn't matter. What matters is when timing is super super important. So that's why if you're gonna pick up an MX Cherry switch like just a normal one, I do prefer either the brown, which has not as much clickiness, but you can feel when the key actually triggers. Or the blue, I think, is the best, but you'll probably drive yourself crazy with the sound or your neighbor. Finally, you have MX Cherry Black, which I kind of really don't understand the point of, unless maybe you just have really, really strong fingers. And uh, because MX Cherry Black is literally just MX Cherry Red, except it's harder to press down. So it has a it, it has a pretty decent more resistance. It's, uh, I mean, I guess it, I, I, I really don't think anyone should get this. Like I said, unless you have really, really strong fingers and you really want that extra force. So what have we talked about so far? We went over membrane keyboards a little bit, and that's the best one on the market, guys. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, I've, I've had it for so long. Writers will tell you, tons of people will tell you that that is the best membrane keyboard uh, you can get. I had it for seven years. That's just my opinion. So that's at least the standard I'm holding other membrane keyboards up to. We also talked about mechanical keyboards a little bit and their differences. So a little bit more luxurious, better for maybe everyday use, but for pure gaming, like I want my functionality to be tip top. I don't care about having, ooh, the, the keys feel nice. Like I just care about 
latency, I care about the switch triggers when I want to. The membrane keyboard was stronger there, but there's the third option. And funnily enough, what even made me make this video in the first place is that when I, I was just gonna buy the same keyboard. I was going to buy that exact same Logitech keyboard all over again because I was figuring, well, I've used it for seven years. I love that keyboard. Why not just buy another one? But uh, that, was, that would be a little bit boring. We have to try more. And I realized that recently actually, Razer put out this thing, which is the Razer Ornata. It's supposed to be a mix between membrane and mechanical. It's called Mecha Membrane. And besides being what sounds like the antagonist of a sci-fi film, the Mecha Membranes uh, are actually pretty sick. They're pretty awesome. So let's, let's take a look at this a little bit. All right, so back to this view. Now it looks pretty similar if we, uh, if we get this. You know, it, it doesn't look too, uh, this is definitely narrower. Like these are straight up chiclet keys and these are a little bit higher. So, but it's still, it's pretty close. It's a pretty good mix. Like I said before, it, it is a mix. It's definitely in between this crazy super big switch and the chiclet keys, uh, keycap rather than the chiclet keycaps of the membrane keyboard. And we can see again, functions from both. Once again, we sort of have the feeling where it's either up or down, up or down, up or down. Now there's a tiny, like, and I mean a tiny amount of wiggle room, but it's pretty much just, I'm not pressing the key, I'm pressing the key. Not M, not M. There's nothing in between there. There's, I'm basically just wiggling the key at this point. But when I trigger the key, there's actually more room below the key, which kind of gives it more of a mechanical feel. Also, it's, it's clickier. It's definitely quite a bit clickier. And it's cool because it gives you the advantage of having that immediate pre button press. There is no, there is no lag time whatsoever because it's either up or down. But at the same time, because it's smoothed out a little bit below the switch, it is actually much nicer. It feels much more luxurious. It's easier to press down the keys. And in fact, I've used this keyboard for about a week before doing the video, right? And I, I'm kidding you not. So normally I type it about a hundred words per minute. And when I swapped to this keyboard, on average, right, with my old keyboard, I typed about 100 words per minute. This one, I typed about 115. So it actually is a real difference in terms of everyday usage. Both pretty similar for gaming, but this, this keyboard gives you both the, the gaming performance that you'd get from like a hardcore membrane keyboard like that, and the luxurious like, ooh, this feels nice of a regular mechanical keyboard. Personally, I think I finally found the upgrade that I was looking for to my seven-year-old Logitech membrane keyboard. Like I said, I've tried Corsair Vengeance. I've tried Razer Black Widow. I've tried all these high-end keyboards that are supposed to be better, and I was excited every time I returned them all. This one, though, I'm keeping. This one definitely bridges the gap between membrane and mechanical. On the, on the topic of uh, Razer Black Widow, actually, because remember, these are just Corsair switches. These are just MX Cherry switches. Uh, the Razer Black Widow, is pretty much the same as the blue, the really, really clicky one I was talking about. It's actually a little bit, the switch though, is a little bit higher up. So here, notice how you have to go quite a bit before you actually find the switch. On the Razer Death Adder, it's still, there's still room, but it, it's just slightly, sli it's like five millimeters higher. So technically, from a raw functionality perspective, the Black Widow would be better there. But Corsair's also come out with, it's called MX Cherry Speed, which is equivalent to that. The MX Cherry Speed is again, a higher actuation point. And notice guys, I'm not talking about like, usually when you look at a keyboard review, they're like, ooh, the, the lights are very bright. You know, <laughs> like, like I, I like how it's metal. It feels very nice to touch. It's very pretty, right? No, no, no. We're, we're gamers, man. We're, we're hardcore gamers. We just care about the nitty gritty, the switches. Some other things to keep in mind is the size of the keyboard. So that membrane keyboard I showed before, look at that. That's so small. I mean, if you go to lands and stuff, that's pretty important, right? Uh, this keyboard, the Mecha membrane keyboard, bigger. But the actual keyboard itself, still uh, the same size, it's just, it's just thicker. So these keyboards, obviously, they don't have macro keys. I never really understood the use of macro keys. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me like they have a special use, but normally you can just use the function keys, use auto hotkey. So I've never actually seen any use for macro keys on the keyboard itself. I just use the function keys. But if you're looking for macro keys, then well, get a keyboard with macro keys, obviously. Like I said, I think you can just always use auto hotkey plus uh, an unused F key, an unused function key. 
So I know this video kind of came off as really selling the membrane keyboard hard, and I think it's because they deserve, uh, you know, the non, you know, Corsair, we're gonna market, we're gonna sponsor every tournament, we're gonna throw ads in front of you all the time. I think that the other keyboards deserve a chance, and actually a lot of times they're better. So, but to give a fair, to give you a fair summary, membrane keyboards, that specific one, right? I, I would not go for, oh, by the way, don't go for any others. Like, don't go for any other non-mechanical gaming keyboards. Just don't, it's a complete waste of money. Seriously, anything that's not that specific membrane keyboard, I cannot vouch for, and I've had pretty bad experiences with anything else that's not a mechanical keyboard that's not that keyboard, right? If you want like the hardcore, super functionality all the way, I would say that keyboard will give you the technical best response to time, the technical best gaming ability. Although you will be sacrificing uh, you know, luxury whenever you're just using your computer like a normal human being, like, like a normal person, right? And that can be a problem. This, uh, the Razer Ornata, I think there, there are some other hybrid keyboards that I've, that I've seen, so you can check those out, but I can personally vouch for this one because I've been using it for a little while now. This is almost identical in functionality to the membrane keyboard, but it just feels a hundred times better at, like anywhere else. And it's basically the same price. Like that keyboard is like $50 or so, the membrane keyboard, this or $60. This one's only like, uh, like six, like $70 itself. So these are like half the price of normal mechanical keyboards. And it depends on whether they're on sale or stuff. It, it the price changes, right? Uh, these mechanical keyboards are going to run you like 140, 120 plus at, at the very least. And these will feel the most luxurious, the best if you are just doing normal stuff. So like if you are in an office, for example, if, if you have a keyboard for your, for your workplace, for your office, I would totally recommend these types of keyboards. They feel awesome, but technically inferior functionality wise, as far as gaming goes, because of the actuation times on the switches. They're just meant too much for typists, for writers, for people who uh, who are using the keyboard for normal functions, not that quick twitch stuff for gamers. Like these are actually not for game. This thing, the clicky clicky keyboards, these were originally for typists, not for gamers. And well, it really shows. So uh, like I said, if you aren't so much into like really hardcore gaming, totally get these, they feel awesome. If you are like a really hardcore gamer, but you wanna feel nice too, the Mecha Membrane evil alien antagonist uh, keyboard is probably good for you. And if you're like the hardcorest of the hardcore gamers, you go to LANs, uh, you want a small keyboard that is technically the best, like the razor edge sort of advantage, I really do genuinely think that that Logitech membrane keyboard is is the best. And I, I kind of gave you my reasonings all the way through. I think that I didn't miss anything. By the way, the lights are so bright. No, no I'm just kidding. Uh, I've linked all of these keyboards, all, all this stuff down below. I'll link this just in case you want to feel for yourself before you buy your own mechanical keyboard. I totally recommend it. It's eight bucks to test out a $160 investment. That's totally worth it. Uh, I'll link the Razer Arnada, I'll link the Logitech K, I don't know, backlit keyboard, whatever it's called, K70 something, uh, down below as well. So yeah, guys, don't feel offended if I dissed your keyboard. If you use MX Cherry Red Switches and you love them, then that's cool. You go ahead and use them. This is, uh, of course, still just an opinion, although I gave reasoning and I gave logic that hopefully uh, you, can at least, uh, you can at least appreciate. So guys, uh, never forget to stay positive and have a great day. See you soon.